Hello, this is Matt Montgomery, Burris Sales Agronomist. Today we're going to begin a series on nitrogen. In this series, we'll begin with a brief nitrogen overview. We'll get a little more specific in lessons that follow. Now let's begin our overview by discussing why this nutrient, so needed as a fertilizer in corn and naturally fixed by bacteria in beans, is important. It really comes down to five points. Nitrogen is important because it just makes up lots of the plant's weight. It's a macronutrient. Nitrogen is important also because on a related point, it's used to make proteins. Nitrogen is important because it's part of the chlorophyll molecule. We'll talk about that. Nitrogen is important in a negative way because it may be easily deficient in corn. And finally, on another negative point, nitrogen is important because while it's desperately needed by the plant, it can also have some really nasty environmental side effects. So when we say that nitrogen makes up a lot of the plant's weight, what do we really mean? What does a lot of the plant's weight look like? Well, let's start by looking at the bookends of plant weight. What makes up most of the plant's weight and what makes up the least? Note that I did not say what is important and what's not. There's an important distinction here. Just because you can't weigh a lot out doesn't mean it's not important. Anyway, back to topic. Carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen make up most of the plant's weight. About 95% of the plant's weight is carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Plants get most of this from the air and from water. In other words, these nutrients are ripped from the air and water and reforged into plant parts. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, equally important, but not making up much of the plant by weight, we have the micros. At best, they make up maybe one hundredth of a percent of the plant by weight. So think of stuff like iron, etc. Just up from that, slightly up from that bookend, are secondary nutrients. Again, they're equally important, but they just make up a little less of the plant by weight, and they're a little bit better by weight than the micros are. Think calcium, sulfur, and magnesium as secondaries, and think of them making up about a tenth to two-tenths of a percent of the plant by weight. Now enter the macronutrients, of which nitrogen is a member. The other two members are phosphorus and potassium, or potash. Now, two-tenths to 1.5% doesn't sound like much as you look at this slide, but when you think of nutrients pulled into the plant, or maybe we should say stuff not acquired from the air and water, this is huge. Nitrogen makes up about 1.5% of the plant by weight, and that means it is really present within the plant. That's why we call it a macro. I guess the next question logically would be, so if it's really present, where is it present? One answer would be proteins. Nitrogen is a really big part of stuff called amino acids, which make up proteins. That can get confusing, but let's just say in some ways, nitrogen makes up the building blocks, amino acids, of building blocks, proteins, in the plant. Proteins aren't just building blocks, though. They're also used to jumpstart chemical reactions, to help set cells respond to stimuli, to help stuff move around in cells. They're used as a basic part of the genetic code, and they're used to send instructions from the genetic code to little cell factories that make stuff for the plant cell. Anyway, the point is, when we say nitrogen is really present, it's all over the place, and part of the reason is it's found in proteins. And what could get more important for a plant than this? This is what chlorophyll molecules look like. Remember, chlorophyll is the secret sauce that lets a plant store sunlight energy in chemical batteries that we call sugars. No chlorophyll, no sugars, and the plant dies. Isn't it interesting that nitrogen is right in the middle of the thing? Run short on nitrogen and you run short on chlorophyll. And a plant isn't going to like that or perform well when that happens. 
So we've kind of talked about some positive things. Now we're going to do a negative route. We said there were some negative reasons why nitrogen is such a big deal. And this right here is one of them. We'll talk about this in detail in a future session, but nitrogen is easily transformed into a molecule that can be lost easily from the soil. That's, of course, an issue in corn. Because nitrogen helps make up that green chlorophyll needed by the plant, it really isn't surprising that lost low nitrogen would cause the plant to yellow. Because a lack of chlorophyll will cause a plant not to produce enough sugars, it's also really not surprising that this can mess up the ear. Late season, we'll see what you see in the picture here. We'll see aborted kernels, an ear that's set back. Early season, we may see an ear that's fewer kernels around. Now, there's an important side note here. If you put nitrogen on when soils are warm in the spring and you don't get it in the right place, like getting it into the soil itself, even if you get it into the soil and it's still too warm, you will lose nitrogen and will see an impact like that that's shown here. So it's important to get nitrogen right. We also said there was another big, and I mean a really big, negative issue that makes nitrogen such a hot-button topic. That's the fact that nitrogen is easily lost once it converts over, and it may be easily lost into the air or sometimes water. That's where it gets big. Nitrogen, nitrates actually in water, can replace oxygen in the blood. We don't need to define why that's bad. Nitrogen also can flow into the Gulf of Mexico through tile outlets, etc., causing low oxygen fish killing environments to appear. For this reason, we really stress nitrogen efficiency. We want to make sure we apply nitrogen in such a way that we get the most out of it for the plant and we lose as little as possible. If we lose a lot of it, that's a bad day. So there are BMPs, Best Management Practices, that we'll discuss in future sessions. Well, that wraps up Lesson 1. We'll see you back here for Lesson 2, and thanks again for watching.